Hey, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast Network. On today's show, I'm excited. We are going to have Justin Gar, voice of the Gophers from the sideline, bumper to bumper, radio host with uh, Dan Barrero. But more importantly, he's my co-host from the PJ Fleck Show. And we are going to talk about PJ Fleck in his open because PJ Fleck, we haven't talked about him a lot this, this year. We talked about him a little bit with Jerry Kill. Um, but PJ Fleck said something yesterday in his press conference about culture. And that the players, they won 62 to 10, I think. And he said some players did some stuff culturally wrong. Culturally wrong in a 62 uh, point, like, bombarding of, uh, of Western Illinois. But the man sticking to his culture, stay tuned for what they did wrong. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. One-of-a-kind opinions, big-name guests, the teams you care about every, every, every day. It's the Ron Johnson Show, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. Hey, everyone, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show, and I'm excited today because, as I mentioned, Justin Gar, voice of the Gophers, is going to be joining us uh, in the Hang of Ron Johnson segment. He's going to stick around for the Daily Three. He also is on the bumper to bumper with Dan Barrero. So we're going to talk some controversial stuff that's come up between him and Dan on the radio. But today is a PJ Fleck day. Yesterday in PJ Flex press conference, he kind of mentioned some stuff the players did culturally wrong as I brought that up. And when you win, when you score 62 points as an offense, and this was the offense, this was culturally things done wrong offensively. But when I when you score 62 points, like if I'm a receiver on an offense, I score 62 points, I hear my coach said, man, you guys did some things culturally wrong. I'm going to be like, what? Like, what else do I need to give you? What else do I need to do? But I'll explain what happened. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota for endless Vikings talk during the football season. Not only can you find us on YouTube or your favorite pop podcasting platform, but we are now on Roku and Amazon Fire with the all-new Locked On Sports Minnesota app. Check it out today for all your favorite shows. And as I bring my producer, Sam Extraman, we're going to talk a little bit about this P.J. Fleck era. And when you look at the Gophers win over Western Illinois, score 62 points, uh, dominated from start to finish. Uh, there was never a question. Didn't feel like Bowling Green. They have Colorado coming up. And this is where I go with this. P.J. Fleck said the players won, but the offensive guys did something that is not of the row the boat culture or their program culture. And this is what it was, Sam. Uh, when they were down in the red zone on the one-yard line, there were a couple running backs that extended the ball. And they reached the ball over the goal line to try to get a score on like second or third down versus just getting a little bit more and then letting the next guy score, letting it be a quarterback sneak. He said, because we have a play called the quarterback sneak, and it's about 98 efficient right now for us. And it's less of an opportunity to fumble than you reaching the ball over goal line. And Justin Gard made the joke, and we'll talk about this, that, man, you wouldn't have been able to play for P.J. Fleck. I would have been in trouble. And I might have been. I'm not going to lie. Because I'm trying to get every inch. I, I even said it on the P.J. Fleck show. I'm like, well, what about if I put two hands on the ball? And he's like, well, that's only two points of contact. He said, if you tuck it and leave it, that's five points of contact. He's like, would you rather two points? Two points or five points of contact? And I'm like, yeah, coach, you're right. But as a player, I'm still like, man, I got to get this tutty. I need this touchdown. Like, come on. But I get it because it's not about you. It's about the team. What if you fumble? Look at the Seahawks and the, and the uh, Broncos. There was a couple red zone fumbles down there. I get both sides of the story. But at the end of the day, when you're building a culture, and this is what he said, and, I, and, I, and this is where I, I'm going to get to you on this, Sam. He said, we're building a culture so that when it matters, it doesn't happen. Because if we continue to allow them to do that and we don't call them out, like we can't just call them out in practice or we can't just call them out in tough games. If we don't call them out in the blowout games, then they think it's okay. And then it becomes a cultural thing where we're like, oh, we're going to let stuff slide. And I'm like, I get that. Because when you face Colorado, maybe, when you go to Michigan State for sure, those type of plays are going to be the game of inches. Like, if you held on to that ball, maybe we win the game. If you waited till we got to the one-yard line and let our quarterback just push it in, we win that game. But no, you, you, got, you were selfish and you wanted to score for ESPN and you reached it out of the goal line. And a guy punched it out 
Uh, it came out. Uh, it might have crossed the goal line, but the ref didn't call it. Ball's out. He's going to give it to the other team. Now we don't have a chance to score, go up by three, and win this game against Michigan State. So I completely understand where he's saying it, but it's just so hard as a former player to be like, nah, I'm going to let this, I'm going I'm to go ahead and get this. I know it's not culturally what we do, but I need to get this. And so I know players, you know, like these are 18 to 22 year old men. Tanner Morgan's 30, but the 18 to 22 year old men, they're out there and they're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. We just blew this team out and you're talking about culture and this, but look, when you're building a culture, you have to do it. You have to. It's like building a culture in your own household with your kids. You can't let one kid do one thing and another kid not. You can't one parent say, okay, no iPad, and the other parent give in. Like, you have to build that culture to where the point where the kids just know. Like, this is what we do. And I think that's what the role of both culture is about. I think that's what PJ Flex trying to do is, is he's trying to make sure – that these guys are always ready for every moment. That's his job. He also made the comment that he rarely enjoys watching TV or movies because he's always looking for the next like clip, uh, the yeah, next like heard moment that. where he can he can he can post it and tell his players. And he's like, Heather gets sick of that because I'm always like pausing stuff when we're watching TV because I got to re rewind and record it. And 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 she's like, can't we just watch Days of Our Lives? Like, why do you care? that the guy, you know, is, is dead and now he's alive again, um, you know, because P.J. Fleck wants to be able to tell the team, like, look, you might die, but you have a chance to come back. The season's not over because in soap operas, nobody's ever dead. Every time somebody dies, they come back because, hey, I wasn't really dead. I was just in a coma. And so <laughs> when you think about all the things of this culture, I can truly appreciate that because that's the one thing how programs are built. That's the one thing when recruits come, what they can expect. Uh, some recruits can say, no, that I'm not about this culture, man. Coach, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stick the ball over the goal line. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm good. But when you get to the NFL and those other places, that's the things that maybe be are sustainable. The culture you bring from college can be sustainable in the NFL. And I think that's another step PJ is trying to do. He's trying to build his players to be the next step. And we're going to talk about NFL type players later in the daily three with uh, Justin guard. So we're not going to jump into that, but Sam, before we get out of here and head over to uh, hang up with Ron Johnson's segment, what are your thoughts on, on the culture of PJ Fleck and that comment? Yeah. So I like how principled his culture is and how consistent it seems to be. Um, he's not going to let the little things slide. He's going to be very rigid day to day. And I'm sure it rubs some, you know, some young men the wrong way who are like, like you said, rolling their eyes at why can't I just reach across the goal line? Now on that particular coaching point maybe it's different college kids to pro but it's in direct contrast to like something Kirk Cousins was saying after the game he was saying it about Justin Jefferson Justin Jefferson always finishes the play he doesn't go out at the one yard line or the three yard line he actually gets to the goal line and he scores like on that second touchdown he had in the Packers game because mm. the next play is never a guarantee it's not a guarantee that the QB sneak works or that the, the next play is going to produce positive yardage. Like I'm thinking of Jamar Chase in that Bengals Steelers game, Ron. I don't know if you saw this, but mm -hmm. on the yep. drive before the final, so the second to last drive for Cincinnati, Chase catches it at the one. It's first and goal inside the one. And he might have been across the goal line. And the coach said, no, nah, we're not going to challenge that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead first and goal at the one. Well, they go minus yards on a run play, incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. And they turn the ball over on downs. Um, so it's never a guarantee what's going to happen next. So if I'm the coach, I, I'm not sure that I would abide by that actual principle. Nonetheless, I, I admire PJ for sticking to his guns on something that seems kind of trivial because that's probably how he builds a successful culture. Yeah, and that's what you got to say. You got to look at, like, what's the result of that? He's 2-0. and Like, you know, he's had some big seasons. And so... You, you know, you can't, if there, if this was a conversation before result, maybe you can have that, you can have that debate, but this is a conversation after result. We know the result. We know what is built. We know what it's done. Um, I, I told it, and he said, there's a time and a place. So this is what he did say. So this is the part of the culture. Let's, let's, let's expand this. He said, there's a time and a place for that, for reaching over, whether it's fourth down. So regardless, you're going to lose the ball. So I am okay with that. He's saying first, second down, third down, don't do it because we still have fourth down. So he is like, he's very calculated 
in that. And I think that's the biggest part of his culture is like, you can't take certain sound bites and not hear the entire thing. Because on the PJ Flex show with, with myself, Justin Gard and Pierre Newsham, he did bring that up. He said, you know what? There's a time and a place, you know, on fourth down. Yeah, go get it. I need you to get it because now it's fourth down. And if you lose the ball, the one anyway, we're going to lose the ball. So go get it. Uh, if you're a receiver out there by yourself, uh, you're running a go route. There's nobody around you that can knock it out. Yeah, you can knock the pylon down. Uh, so he's not saying don't do it. He's saying in those running back situations inside of a pile and it's 50 people around you and you're fighting for every little inch, just keep it. Keep it to your hip and just keep pushing. Hopefully the offensive line can push you in. If not, let the next guy do it. Uh, because it's it's family. Forget about you, I love me. Or forget about me, I love you. Now, I don't know what word <laughs> I just spelled. <laughs> <laughs> I spelled F A Y I L M. I don't know that's a word, but I want to put that up there. But uh, forget about Failed. me. I love you. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's that's why he's doing it. He wants the, the players to be selfless, selfless to be about the team uh, and not of themselves. And so, I, I think it's a, it's a great uh, cultural rule to have uh, because even in marriage, you have to sometimes do that. You have to sacrifice for your for your family. Definitely for your wife. You know, you might order a whole thing of French fries, but you're only going to get half because she didn't want fries. But then when they came out, she wanted them. So you got to be able to just be selfless and say, you know what? I'm not going to take this last fry. You can have this because you clearly have eaten all my fries. And then you, you, you'll you probably be married longer. Um, I, I think that's the biggest key of this is that he's trying to build and grow men. Uh, but up next, we got Justin Gard. Voice of the Gophers on the Hangover to Ron Johnson segment. But before we get into that, we got a word from our sponsors. BetOnline.net, Ron, is, uh, continues to be your home for pro and college football betting needs. Find all of the latest football, league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's Week 2 games, Vikings and Eagles. It's still hanging around at Vikings Plus 2 underdogs in Philly Monday night. Bet Online is also your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. They've also got MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn about the trends and action happening. I was taking a peek at it before this. I like Tennessee plus 10 at Buffalo. 10 seems like a pretty big spread for a Mike Vrabel coach team that has Derrick Henry. They're going to shrink that game. I like the Titans plus 10. Check it out, betonline.net, where the game starts. Now coming up on the Hangar with Ron Johnson segment, I got my friend Justin Gar, voice of Gophers women's basketball, voice of the Gophers on the sideline for, for K-Fan, and then also the bumper to bumper, Dan Barrero. He's the inbox guy. Justin Gar, thanks for joining me on the Ron Johnson Show. All right, JG, I want to get into this. You're an Edina-born kid. A lot of people hate you for it, but yep. you grew up a Vikings fan. Yeah, I loved it. I tweeted out, it's going to be weird to go to the Rose Bowl and Super Bowl in the same year, given that we haven't been to either one in my lifetime. That's going to be very strange in a couple of months. But in all seriousness, I love the opener. Just with how everything ran, Ron, it was such a, a well-oiled machine, to use that cliche. And we've seen a lot of teams in the NFL week one, teams that rested their starters like the Vikings, did. they haven't played very cleanly. And I just that's what I took from the Vikings opener, was how clean they played on both sides of the ball. If you're asking me to pick which one I liked better, Probably the defense, because that, that to me had more question marks. And that was, I think, the main reason they weren't very good the last couple of years is their defense wasn't very good. And they were spectacular. So now you hope that everybody stays healthy on that side of the ball. They continue to get the pass rush that they did. But I, I love it was very enjoyable Vikings Packers game, which we haven't always been able to say. And, and this is where I go with this. So PJ Fleck comes in. He says, I have to change the culture. Um, not good or bad. Just I have to change it. It's my culture. I need to show you guys what the Roll the Boat culture is all about. He got absolutely crushed on social media by a lot of people locally. Uh, nationally, I don't think people care too much to crush it, but locally it felt like people just wanted a reason to, to, to disagree with something, whether they were Killmongers, uh, whether they were, you know, Brewsters, uh, Millions, whatever they, you know, whatever you want to call them, whether they, they were Mason's Minions, um, and they just weren't happy with the, the word, or they were, you know, Clay's candidates. I don't know. But whatever they wanted to do, they weren't happy with P.J. Fleck. One person you know very famously, Meat Sauce. He fought it every week. He talked about the number of captains, all this stuff. You look at the Vikings. They have eight captains now. Eight. Mm -hmm. Eight captains. They also have talked about culture around their building. I haven't heard a peep from people when it comes to the Vikings having a lot of captains and changing the culture. Why is that? I think we're more used to it now, quite frankly, because – 
what PJ was doing, and he wasn't the first one, but he's the one that, that hit us hard with the culture word over and over and over again. That's what everybody does now. I mean, that's what the Timberwolves do. Uh, the Wild don't do it as much. They just kind of do it. They, they, they don't talk about culture a lot. They just kind of do it. But you look at every college football coach, that's what they say. Basketball coach, that's what they say. And now in the NFL, with these young coaches kind of taking over the last handful of years, I think everybody's just used to it, that that's the deal now. I mean, six years ago, it was still kind of fresh, still kind of new. And I heard you talking before, like PJ does everything at such a different level. Like he takes mm-hmm. what might be normal and just takes it to the extreme. And people don't always like extremes. So I think it was more just a shocking thing, you know, six years ago when PJ got here. But now I think everybody's kind of used to it. I mean, everybody's used to what Sean McVay's doing. Everybody's used to what Kyle Shanahan's doing. Everybody's used to Matt LaFleur. These young bucks are coming in and they all kind of do it the same way with the emphasis on people and culture and relationships and all of that. So that's why I think we're kind of, we're not as um, offended by it anymore because we're so used to it. It almost becomes just white noise in the background. And so again, but going back to the captain thing and I'm, I'm, I'm picking on meat sauce. He made fun of the captains for the Gophers every week when they would trot out, you know, six to seven guys, but now the Vikings have eight. So how come has he, is, is it maybe he just doesn't notice it? Is that what it is? Like, do we need to point out, that the Vikings have eight captains know. for him to... You need to have meat sauce on the show. I don't know. I know. I, I am. He's coming head. on next. He's you, coming on you next. Think I, you think I know what's going on in meat sauce's head? <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on in meat sauce's head. Um, I, again, I think it's just familiarity. Yeah. And, and the captain, I mean, with the Gophers, I mean, he just liked to pick on him because he liked to pick on him. That was the deal. I mean, right. if you really want to break it down, which is stupid. And we gave him crap for it every time. And he got clapped back on when he lost in the uh, most recent password invitational by the Minnesota football Twitter account, which was great. We should all be having fun with that. So, yeah, I just think uh, that was low hanging fruit for him. And I think he's um, turned the corner a little bit on all of that. Well, we'll put that one to bed. Now let's move on to the next one. You were on the sideline. Uh, for all the Gophers football games, but you were most famously now the person that Jerry Kill hates probably the most now because you ruined his Dunkers appearance uh, to speak when he was here in town. Did you get a chance to talk to Coach Kill before the game and did he even know that you were the culprit for that? Uh, probably not. Uh, he probably didn't know because I think he has bigger things to worry about, um, just coaching his own team and doing all those things. I did not get a chance to. No, I'm, I do the pregame show out on Oak Street, so I don't really get into the stadium until maybe 15, 20 minutes before they kick it off. So I, I did not. I, I'm glad that game is over. You and I talked about it a lot. Like It yeah. gave us great content, which we're all looking for, especially like late August, late August, early September, when the Vikings weren't playing anybody in the preseason and we had nothing to bounce off of. It was nice to have a way to kill a couple of segments on TV and radio. Um, right. But once that game hit, um, when it continued to just keep going and going and going, I was ready for it to be done. Um, I still think it was ridiculous that the Dunkers wanted an old football coach who's absolutely trashed both the university and the current head coach to come right. and speak to their group. I thought that was stupid. I still do. Um, sorry if you disagree with me. It's it's dumb. No one, Nowhere else in the country would anybody do that. Um, nowhere else. And, and if I'm PJ, I'm sitting there going, these are my business leaders that are supposed to help me with NIL and buying tickets and corporate sponsorships. And they're bringing in the guy that basically says he never wants to see me again, shake my hand or take me out to dinner. Like, what are you doing? So yeah, the whole thing was dumb. I'm glad it happened, like I said, because I think we got to kind of remind people like how stupid this place is sometimes, Minnesota. <laughs> and I'm glad that we got some content out of it. And now I'm glad that we can just move on and talk about the season and have the games and, and never really have to discuss it again. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a wild week or so. It was a wild week or so when all that was going down. Uh, when you think about PJ Fleck, he was on our show talking about culture. Uh, we talked about it earlier in the segment though. Uh, you made the comment that I probably would have been in a lot of trouble if I was on this team. Uh, but no when question. you think about <laughs> when you think about this this culture from an offensive standpoint, let's look at the offense. Um, what what can he build on? Like by by making sure these players understand, do you think now it will be hypersensitive for Colorado? Like we're going to see players super tuck the ball when they're in a the pile now, just because I mean they they know what PJ is looking for. They want to you know they want to stay on the field. They want to stay culturally. Uh, you know, a part of what they do. Do you think now this becomes a hyper focus of some of the players? They might have, you know, done the the, the Michael Jordan stretch to try to get them a touchdown yeah. late in the game. Yeah, I would think so. Um, and the Colorado pivot point is interesting because I vaguely remember last year in Colorado, uh, Tanner Morgan um, basically chasing after the young running backs every single time to make sure that they kept, you know, they do that thing where they hold onto the ball and hand oh, it yeah. directly yep. to the ref. 
And yep. Tanner was basically running behind the running backs, making sure that they were doing that. And that's why I think this works because they have guys like Tanner. They have guys like Mo. They have guys like Chris Ottman Bell defensively. They have guys like Mariano Sori Marin. Like they do have players driving all of it and that are 100% invested. So when you have your star players that have been around forever um, doing those little things, I think it makes it easier. So yeah, I think, I, and t- truthfully, it shows you, I didn't even notice it that a player reached the ball out at the goal line. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he talked about it a couple of different times that he wasn't happy about it, but typically that stuff gets corrected. And again, that's just an, an instinct that players have, you know, that, I mean, that's just right. it's what you've seen on TV. It's what you've practiced for your whole life. So it's just a habit I think that needs to be broken, but that's why they practice it. That's why they emphasize it. And that's why they do it. So yeah, I would imagine that, that mistake, if you want to uh, using quotations here, if you, if you want to call that a mistake, I would imagine that doesn't happen again because um, it was pretty clear that he emphasized that a lot, but that is PJ. I mean, he always says everything matters. How you do anything is how you do everything. And he is a detail guy and there are not many details that go unchecked. So um, I thought that Western Illinois game was perfect for stuff like that because I thought they approached it. Well, they were obviously going to win. They were obviously going to win by a lot. They should be practicing stuff. They should be throwing bombs. They should be working mm-hmm. on the passing game. They even did a special uh, kind of pooch kickoff when they got the penalty that had him kick off at the 50. They got, got a, lot, a lot of guys playing. Like, that's how they should have approached that game, and I'm glad that it kind of worked out like that. Well, I'm going to give you some content for your radio show today. You're the nexus. Like, you're the reason why a lot of people are successful. If you think about this, Lindsey Whalen going into the Basketball Hall of Fame. She's a Justin Gar wow. co- uh, connection. Uh, Dan Barrero going into the Radio Hall of Fame or Media Hall of Fame connection. Uh, myself going to the Gopher Sports Hall of Fame. I have to thank Justin Gar for that. Uh, Pierre Nugent. I did vote for you. The first, he throwing out the first pitch. I know you did. I don't know if my wife did, though. I, I still need to ask her. She never gave me a true answer. Um, Pierre Nugent throwing out the first pitch of the, of the Saints game. Like, when, when, what, what is life like being Justin Gar when all these people are just, you know, Hall of Famers because of you? Uh, yeah, it's it's humbling, very humbling. Yeah, and I'm sure I'll get thanked in all the speeches. I didn't get thanked in Lindsay's. I don't know. I mean, I'm talking to you at, at your Hall of Fame deal, so maybe I'll drop my own name. Um, I assume Dan will give me a little shout out. Yeah, I just hang out with the right people, man. That's the key to success. Just hang out with the right people. Be around guys that are guys and gals that are winners, and you're going to be all right. But yeah, that's um, it's been a busy week for all my friends. I've had nothing to do. Um, I'm not going into any Halls of Fame. So I've um, just been watching Lindsay. I'll watch Dan on Saturday, and I'll watch you on Friday. That I missed Pierre's uh, first pitch. We'll have to see how that went. But just hang out with good people, kids. You're going to go far. Just hang out with good people, and you'll be all right. <laughs> well, up next, we got Justin Gar going to stick around for about 15 more minutes, maybe 10 more minutes. We got the daily three. That's three questions, three minutes each. So that's nine minutes. Bad math. All right, and JG, just a note. Um, the Hall of Fame hasn't come knocking yet, but you were the first guy that let me into this business as well. So just keep that in the back That's of your right. mind. Uh, That's right. I was hoping came, I'd get credit for that. I was hoping I'd get credit for that. <laughs> yeah. Just remember me. Just remember me. Appreciate that. Well, you're, you're connected, Justin, to, to the Gophers pretty strongly, so I want to pose this question to both you and Ron. Uh, Justin, I'll let you go first, give you about a minute and a half here on the three-minute clock. Uh, the next Gophers team to win the Big Ten, football or men's basketball? Hockey. Oh, um, that's a good one. I saw that. Well, football, like the West, I think they're right in the mix for the West. I wish you would have said, like, can they win their division? Because Ohio State's, like, lurking over there. Ohio State is like this, you know, yeah. gorilla that nobody can beat, um, this elephant in the room. So that's what makes the football part difficult. I could definitely see them playing for the Big Ten Championship. So um, by winning the West this year, I think I don't think we've seen a great team out of the West yet. Um, but I guess I'll go, I mean, I'll say if, the, if those are my choices because of the Ohio state thing, man, I, I still think I'd go football. I still think I'd go football. Cause I think they're going to be good this year. They'd only have to, you know, get to Indianapolis and then beat Ohio state somehow. Maybe that could happen with a six year quarterback, six year running back, six year wide receiver, and a bunch of uh, experienced guys on the defense. But I will say, I do like uh, what Ben Johnson's doing recruiting. I, I love his freshman recruiting class. I love Dawson Garcia being back here. I love the, the players that he's in on for the next couple of years, some of them in-state, some of them out-of-state. I think they're going to be pretty good the next few years, but um, if it's going to happen quicker, I think football would have a better chance. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one for me. Uh, I definitely think, if it like I agree with that, if it was the West, I was going to say go for football for sure because Wisconsin, Iowa, this seems like the year. This seems like – the year and of course this is only you know early in the season we always get our emotions up high but this feels like the year 
Uh, but they haven't played Michigan State. So it doesn't matter if Wisconsin yeah. and Iowa aren't good because if we aren't good, then or we can't beat, you know, big time teams and it doesn't matter because then Purdue's going to take the West. And, you know, then we're all over there crying over spilled milk or Northwestern or something. But um, Miz basketball, I agree with that. I love the Dawson Garcia grab. Uh, I think he's going to be one of the b- best players in the Big Ten this year with uh, if he's confident. Like when I seen him play at prior Lake High School, he was extremely confident. He was a, you know, give me the ball guy, even though his coach was dumb and didn't do it. Um, but he was a give me the ball guy. Uh, he was a guy that can shoot threes. He can post you up. He can take you off the dribble. He can put back dunks. Uh, so he's a very athletic, strong, big kid. So I think, you know, in basketball, it, because it's five players, it only takes one to two sometimes to really change a program around. But again, I got to go back to Mo Ibram. Uh, when you look at the Big Ten as a whole, if you can run the ball, you can control the clock. And if you can control the clock, you can win games because you can keep your offense on the field and their defense um, sitting – or sorry, their, and their offense sitting down. Your defense, like our defense, rested. And they first game played 33 plays. Um, so that's the kind of things that I see with this team. Uh, to beat Ohio State, two things might happen. Ohio State might falter against Michigan. Michigan's pretty good. That's true. Um, but to, be, to beat Ohio State, they will need to run the ball because if they get the ball back – Marvin Harrison Jr. and that offense with uh, uh, C.J. Stroud is ridiculous. So, but I got to go go for football. But they got they got two juggernauts over there: Michigan, Ohio State. They would have to knock off and Michigan State, I guess too. Yeah, the odds are just better for football because you only have to beat six teams for the division, and then right. one team in the championship. Basketball, you got to beat thirteen, yep. and soon to yep. be fifteen. So that's just a lot of competition to face. Let's talk a little. Vikings. Way to bring logic into uh, it, Sam. Way to bring logic and math into this whole thing. Data, data analysis. Uh, That's right. Vikings. Is it data or data? 23. Always gets me with that one. I'm a data guy. Sounds more pretentious. Uh, 16 point win for the Vikings. Justin Guard, does the convincing nature of the win change how many victories you foresee the Vikings having this season? Not really. I thought they were going to be good. And when we were doing this on the radio, like I thought these first two weeks were really critical, like to where this season could go. Because I don't think their schedule's that hard. I mean, that you look at their schedule. First of all, I don't think the NFC is really all that to be um, worried about. I don't think there's greatness there. Where it used to be, there was this logjam, right, of like the Packers were good. The Saints were good. Russell Wilson in Seattle was good. Like you always had San Francisco kind of looming. Obviously, Tom Brady and all of that. Like I don't fear anybody in the NFC like I have in years past. So as I looked at the schedule... It's like, okay, well, they should beat Washington. They should beat Chicago. They should beat Detroit. They should beat New Orleans and London. Um, they you know, are going to Buffalo. That's a tough one. That's probably an L. But then you look, it's like, okay, you got Dallas at home, New England at home. Like, as I was checking it off, I'm like, well, I can't say they're going to be 15-2. and two. That's crazy. Someone's going to think Paul Allen hacked me. Um, but I thought they were going to be good. <laughs> and I, I thought they were going to be, you know, an 11 or 12 win team. So that's kind of what, you know, so now if I'm looking at it, I guess I'd say, yeah, maybe they're a 12 and 13 win teams. I thought these first two weeks, if they could beat Green Bay and shoot, if they can beat Philly on the road on Monday night, then I think you could really set yourselves up for a high seed in the NFC. So it didn't really change much. It just maybe changed where I think they'll end up at the end of the year in terms of uh, playoff positioning. Yeah, for me, I don't know. I struggle with this one. The only thing I'll say is I had them at 10 to 11 wins when I did it for the Vikings.com. Uh, me, Tatum, Gabe Henderson, I think Paul Allen. I forgot what I said. I think I said 11 wins, I think, when I did the show. Um, I'm kind of still stuck there, but this is the one thing I do think might change a little bit. I had them splitting games with the Packers. I don't know if that's going to happen because the Packers aren't as good as I thought they were going to be. Um, and then another one that actually like I thought was an easy win is not is the Miami Dolphins. So I think I I look at it both ways. I think there's some teams that we just assumed were, were wins or losses and then Cowboys. Like, if Dak's not back and fully healthy by week 11, even though they lost to the Cowboys before, I don't think this regime would lose to a backup quarterback. Um, was it Cooper Rush, I think? So, I don't – I don't. It was. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I'm kind of torn now because there's some teams where you thought they would lose and now they might win, and there's some teams you thought they would win. Um, like, the Giants, they're, they're going to be okay, but I still don't think that's a win. Uh, I think the last two, Packers and Bears, I had them actually losing to the Packers at the Packers, but now I don't know. Uh, Because Aaron Rodgers might quit. I mean, who knows what he's going to do? He might just say, I'm going to be a a whatever that drug is called, you know, salesman. Ayahuasca. uh, Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. He might become a ayahuasca door to door salesman because he's like, look, this is 
I'm done with this. Get his guitar, get his red wine, get him some ayahuasca, hang out with his girlfriend and try to be divergent. Like, I think he just really wants to be divergent. He's watched too many of her movies and he wants to be divergent. So I think that's where Aaron Rodgers is heading. Just going to say next five quarterbacks on the schedule, Hertz, Goff, Winston, Fields, and Tua. Not a lot of established right. talent there. Exactly Looking right. Good for a good record at the bye. Last one. Back to the Gophers football team. JG, current Gophers football player you see having the most NFL success. Man, that's on the team now. Well, they love yeah. Ariante Ursary, who's an offensive lineman, who got to play a couple uh, a game, I think, in 2020 because of COVID, didn't play last year, and now he's a starter. They absolutely love him. I can't tell you that I've broken down the all 22 on the uh, offensive line you know, film. I haven't graded him out, but they love him. So I'm going to ch uh, cheat and do that. I'm also very intrigued by how Brevin Span Ford kind of moves along this way, uh, because I think he's a pretty good blocker, but I know he's a great athlete. And I know that once he gets unlocked, Ron, you were on the sidelines last year for me in Indiana when he kind of had mm -hmm. his breakout game. Uh, he is super talented. He's a, you know, he's six, seven, he's athletic. And I don't think we've seen even scratch the surface of what he can be. I think they've probably got some things in their pocket for him. So I would probably go with those two, uh, the offensive lineman and the tight end. I'm curious to see, like, if Mo gets a crack, if Mo gets to play a little bit because he is such a unique back. Um, he is older. He's got a lot of hits on him. So I know the NFL will probably hold that against him. But um, I think they've got, you know, some guys that are going to have opportunities next year. And so, I, But I'll – I'll start with Ursary and I'll start with Brevin Span Ford as my two that I think will be NFL type players. Oh, so guys that are going to get a shot. I think Chris Altman Bell will get a shot somewhere. Uh, who knows whether draft yep. pick or if it's late draft pick or if it's a free agency? Because PJ, again, culture works. Like when when coaches are looking for guys to pick up, they got to look at the culture. What school did you come from? You know, do they know your coach? I could see Sean McVay giving giving a. Uh, him a chance because he knows pj he's like hey we can use a, a late round receiver we make them all great um i want to go with justin wally though from a cornerback perspective i think he's shown enough one. so far uh pretty good athletically uh always around the ball uh gophers dbs i mean you go all the way back to to, to tyrone carter uh, and then you move forward, or no, before that, Jimmy Wyrick even. Jimmy Wyrick, then Tyrone Carter. You go to Willie Middlebrooks. Uh, you jump up to Jack Brewer. Uh, then you go with um, uh, uh, Body, Brian Body Calhoun, Eric Murray. Um, we've had a lot of corner Brock backs. Brock Vereen. We have a lot of defensive backs. Uh, Antoine Winfield. Uh, Tyler Newbin, I'm not too sure yet because I haven't seen enough. But Justin Wiley, to be a sophomore and to be as good as he is now as a sophomore, I feel like if he has two more solid years like this, he's going to get a shot. Uh, and, 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 and PJ gets these guys NFL ready. So I got to go with Justin Wiley. Like, he's playing well. He looks confident to be young. He's a, a, a – like I said, he's a sophomore. This kid has two more years to do this if he wants. Who knows? He might have a breakout six interception year next year as a junior and say, I'm out of here. Like, I'm going – I'm first-round pick, 31st to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to go play alongside uh, Antoine Winfield because when Tom Brady retires, they're going to suck. So – I know he's like 38 years old, but what about John Michael Schmitz? <laughs> yeah, that was another one. He, I mean, he'll be he'll be right in there, obviously, and he 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 could have been drafted last year and wanted to come back. So he'll he'll play for a long time. He'll play for a long time. Well, I want to thank JG for joining me on the Ron Johnson Show. That'll do it for us today. I want to thank all of our sponsors, those listeners. Please continue to download, listen, subscribe. Uh, we extremely comment. Let us know what you think about JG's takes. Like, is, is PJ Flex culture right or wrong? Is is Brevin Van uh, Span Forward the next guy to be in the NFL and going to do well? Is JG the nexus? Like, is he just the superstar guy that everybody thinks he is? And before we get out of here, when you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota, you're getting endless Vikings talk with local experts. Subscribe to the free Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast feed wherever you find your podcast. And you can find our videos on Locked On's Minnesota Sports YouTube channel. And, of course, iHeart. You can go download the app there. Apple, Spotify, Roku, Amazon. Just check us out. Let us know what you think. And have a great day.